Thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program, and this is Mature Living. Thank you so much. You're going to learn so much today on this show. We have a variety of guests, and to start off, we're going to introduce you to a new business here in town, and uh, they are Benjamin Fuentes and Elizabeth Lopez, who are spearheading uh, within the last year. I guess you all started your Vital Pass, or Vital or Vital Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit, Benjamin, uh, I know you are the owners, co-owners, you're a family-owned business. Tell me a little bit about Vital Pass. What is, what is that uh, organization? Yeah. Yes, Mary, thank you for having us, first of all. And, uh, and thank you, we are very uh, grateful to start this venture. We're very excited about the community. Yes. And uh, indeed, she is uh, my, uh, my cousin, Liz Lopez. It's a family-owned business here in El Paso. We are from El Paso. And uh, yes, Mary, uh, we came up with the name Vital Paz, Vital Pass, because we are from El Paso. It's a border city, so we wanted to, to make sure uh, we can pronounce it properly in Spanish and in English. So Vital Pass, it's a personal assistant service company. Oh, personal assistant service, okay. Good, yeah. and what, tell me a little bit about, um, you have a concept, home and community services, about your concept. What, what stands out about your services that you're gonna provide, that you're providing already mm -hmm. here in El Paso? Yes, ma'am, our services entitle a caretaker. Uh, many of you all have heard of caretakers. So uh, the state offers some benefits to people with Medicaid uh, for, to have a caretaker that yes. would help with companionship, uh, uh, cleaning uh, services. Yes. And uh, we, we, we came up with the idea because we were experiencing it ourselves uh, uh, with our grandparents. Or, yes, Correct. with our family members. Oh boy, yes. And, and one of the things that, uh, that stands out is that you're not a home health agency. Uh, you're more uh, take care, taking like shopping or taking them to the doctor. Or, that's those kinds of tell me a little bit about that's that. correct Mary um, so like Ben said thank you for having us and yes so it's more of everyday living activities uh, you know we can provide help um, taking uh, running errands taking you to the doctor's appointments um, you know pretty much things in your home like cleaning um, you know or even bathing you know so things like that that's that's what we're here to do for you know for the community for the for the clients that need that type of help. Now, I know you were, we just talked a little bit about some statistics. What was that, ben Benjamin, that you just learned? Uh, yes, ma'am, it all started with uh, a statistic that we heard uh, through an insurance company. Um, about 65,000 people in the United States uh, turn over 65 on a daily basis. Yes. So there will be demand for this type of services there will be needs mm -hmm. there are concerns uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with people and their family members we all have probably a family member who's a senior citizen that we love yeah. and we want the best care for them yes very good and I know you all started your business through uh, with some consulting right with the El Paso Community College uh, Business Development Center Correct. Joe Ferguson's over there with his uh, wonderful consultants and oh they're great we uh, really appreciate yes. that they helped you about a year and a half ago already and now it's 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 really going uh, tell me who qualifies for your services okay Mary so um, anybody actually uh, can qualify for this service okay so in we do have our license that accepts anywhere from ages zero all the way you know to and up okay because the state program Medicaid does cover you know for children that uh, need help have disability and as well as um, you know senior citizens um, as well and so anybody that that with the state um, eligibility they will they will determine how many hours a week the client uh, is you know can get and that's how we we go based off of that to see what their needs are also um you do have private pay, so if That's someone correct. doesn't qualify, they can, the family can also correct. go with private pay. So, and you know, one of the things uh, that that we have to talk about is employment. There's an opportunity for people to come on your on board with your organization, and you're employing right now. Yes. Tell me about what what kind of people you're looking for to to serve your clients. 
Uh, yes, Mary, we are hiring uh, caretakers, caregivers. Uh, we want to differentiate ourselves uh, in the community by actually taking care of our caretakers. Uh, we tend to have a, um, a, a trend uh, that people, we want to listen to our caretakers and, and we found uh, that uh, we would like to be the first ones to offer benefits for the oh, caretakers. And, and a good paying job and the security is so, so, so important uh, for, for everyone. Um, you know, I, I, I know you're local uh, you know, owners, and you're young, <laughs> and thank you for thinking about our elders, you know, as, as the, si the siblings and the kids are all trying mm -hmm. to, the grandkids trying to help mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, to make sure they're safe. And I think that's probably one of the things that personal care services does. If, if someone is out of town, and, or maybe somebody's watching, and uh, they're an elder and their kids are out of town, they can call you also and find out uh, about your services and if it's a good fit for them. Uh, you serve all over town? Definitely, your district. Mary. Yes, yes, we, we do all over El Paso County. And like you said, yes, uh, we also, any type like emergencies, if, if a client just had surgery, or maybe, like you said, their children are leaving out of town, we also accommodate to those needs. That's and wonderful. yes, um, and, and like you said, we are here from El Paso. Um, I actually graduated from Father Yermo High School. And? I went to Cathedral you. High School, class of 2007. <laughs> So wow. Viola la Cate. So. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. My so brothers yes. and my son also went to Cate, Cathedral <laughs> High School. So yes. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, um, it's important that we support our community uh, employers, uh, professionals like yourself, graduated already with economics and business, and, mm -hmm. and we want you to be successful. And uh, thank you also for sponsoring our Christmas uh, oh, Navidad yes. on the Border. You're going to get involved with our senior adult yes, program definitely. supporting our our programs and so now we'd like to go we're ahead we're looking forward to navidad on the border we can give more information yeah. we'd love to have everyone uh, uh come and support and uh yes we are on social media uh -huh. and uh, you can call us to our office to verify if you qualify no obligation we can we can make sure if your if, if your loved ones qualify and that's, that's absolutely no cost. A phone number. Let's uh, give a phone number and an email, whatever you yes. want to share. Our right number is 915-234-2007. And um, you can also email us at info at vitalpass.com. Very good. Yes. We wish you great success. Thank you. And uh, if you all need help out there, you can call Benjamin Fuentes. We've been talking with uh, Liz, or, uh, Liz um, Lopez. And Correct. so thank you. Uh, for being here on Mature Living and sharing your information Thank with you. our audience. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Thank you, we'll Mary. be back with more guests. Well, thank you for staying with us. Uh, we want to continue our show, uh, giving you some great information on places to go and things to do and how you can help our community. And so with, uh, with us is Clara Miles, she's representing the Assistance League of El Paso, uh, which has been in existence, I believe, since the 60s. They're part of a national organization. And I just want to find out all of the things that they do all year round, but in particular, what's coming up right now is their Christmas fair. And I can't wait to get over there, December the 1st and the 2nd, Second. Claire. Yes. Clara, um, and shop because you're saving the best for the Christmas fair. We are. Tell All me year about long that. we save our better jewelry and antiques and we have a lot of Christmas articles to sell this year and our jewelry is always our big seller. Oh we have a gosh. big variety of it and uh, people will come looking for that. And these are all donations so. that you've uh, that have come through to the, to the thrift shop that yes. you have on Yandel Street. We'll give the address. Okay. We're going to just tempt everybody first of all okay. with uh, with the work that you all do. Tell me about your organization, more or less how many members, what are some of your major goals, and then we'll talk about the Christmas okay. fair. Well, uh, as I like to say, we are the best kept secret in town. We've been in existence since 1967 and we are one of 120 chapters nationally. Our members are all volunteers, although we do have uh, paid uh, dues to our national organization, and we welcome anyone who wants to come and help us with our work. 
We have four major philanthropic programs, our big one being Operation School Bell. That's the one mo most people recognize us for. And in that program, we clothe underprivileged school children. Uh, they come to us from the different county schools and we provide them with uh, shoes, underwear, a set sets of clothes so that they can feel good about themselves and do better in school. It's wonderful. Uniforms are very yes. uh, expensive and you help them with the, some yes. of these schools. Uh, you have uh, the bear, the Paso Bears. Tell me about that and then we'll talk about those survivor kids. Okay. Well. The teddy bears are carried by first responders and when there's a child involved in a trauma situation or anyone really yeah. uh, involved in a trauma situation, they are comforted comforted with one of our bears and so we're really proud of that they and have kind our little t-shirt yeah and kind of in the same light the survivor kits for the assault victims the assault victims when they're uh, their clothes when they go to the hospitals to be examined their clothes are taken in evidence and so we provide a set of clothing for them to go home in and they don't have to worry about you know going home in a hospital gown Wow. Okay, the Christmas fair. Let's talk about that because that's the exciting part. Shopping, 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 shopping right? Shopping, <laughs> right. Tell me where the thrift shop is and the, the days and the times. Okay, the thrift shop is located at 2728 East Yandel. That's right off of Piedras. Very, very and good location. And we have been there uh, for a while now and we run our thrift shop out of there. But the one thing we're most excited about is this will be our third annual Christmas fair that we hold there at our chapter house and we'll have all sorts of exciting things for you to shop for and we're, we'll be open December 1st from 10 to 4 and December 2nd from 10 to 3. Very popular. Does it get jam-packed in there? It will be <laughs> jam-packed uh, for the first couple of hours, yes. Absolutely. So. But you can always find beautiful gifts yes. uh, and for yourself a, even. <laughs> and at a discounted price, may I say, really? you know, we're, we're, we have so some you'll really have good antique, prices. Uh, antique furniture if somebody's looking for a special yes. little table. Um, of course, the jewelry, that's always a big Jewelry uh, is a big seller, and we've got some great Christmas decor. Yes. Also. Oh, wonderful. So. Yeah, we're always looking to change. You're right. Maybe we can donate our old stuff. There uh, you go. You know, <laughs> and get some new. Uh, and so it, it's very uh, reasonably priced, all of these uh, items. We feel that it is. We try to give our shoppers a bargain price and yet still make enough funds for ourselves to fund our programs. Yes. And who what members do we credit for all this hard work? Do you want to mention some of your members well, that are just hard working? Well, we have 170 members, and uh, we have shifts. They have to come and run the thrift shop, plus clothe the kids, plus get the bears ready. We are a very busy organization, and we have some very hard working, dedicated members. Yes, and I know Lisa. Uh, Lisa called us, uh, Lisa Merchant. Yes. And uh, you also help LAP. The, the Posada home. Tell yes, me about this. Uh, it's a women's transitional living center, and of course, we um, they come to the home and we help give them a step up uh, as they get ready to go out on their own. So we provide them monthly with some household item that they may need because they usually get there with nothing. nothing. And so uh, you know, pots and pans, towels that that sort of thing. Well, you mentioned earlier uh, a teen program. We do. Tell We're very that. proud about our Assist Teens program. We have 50 members. These are teenagers from all over the city who come together and help. They serve as big brothers and sisters at the Transitional Women's Home and uh, which, you know, they put on Halloween carnivals for the kids and do all sorts of activities with them, as well as assist in some of our elder care homes. Wow. How Putting on proms and oh, stuff really? like that. Oh, really? Oh, yes. yes. How long have you been uh, a volunteer? Almost, uh, what? Uh, Almost 20 years. years. I've been a member since 1999. Uh, I had a friend of mine who we, we just happened to be playing golf and she was busy working on something. I said, what are you working on? And she told me about yes. the organization. I looked into it and really believe in the things that we do. The Assistance League of El Paso. Yes. It's wonderful. Do we confuse you with any other uh, organization? We want to make sure you get the full credit for all full, the work that please. you do. Please, we are in need of full credit for our organization. <laughs> 
let's give the phone number now um, and again the address. Okay, the phone number is 915-564-0600 and the address is 2728 East Yandel and you are welcome to shop at our thrift shop Monday through Saturday 10 to 3. And they might see you there. They, they might see you there as a manager. <laughs> Very good. I do want to give the, uh, the uh, uh, email, not the email, the um, website. website. It's PR at Assistance League of El Paso. And that's the email, I guess uh, that's what it is. But anyway, you are, we're going to be on YouTube, and so we certainly hope that a lot of people come to your December 1st and 2nd Christmas Fair. I'll be there. Thank Early. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll be back with more Mature Living guests. Thank you. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program at the El Paso Community College. I'm inviting you to join us this year on December the 8th from 10 to 2 in the afternoon at the El Paso Community College at 9050 Viscount in the auditorium. We're celebrating Christmas. We're promoting our show, Navidad on the Border Celebration. We will have music, we'll have dancers, we'll have rondalla, we'll have chorus groups. We're gonna have Santa as well. We're gonna have a photo booth. And so we invite all seniors to come to join us on that day, Saturday, December the 8th. We're also gonna have sponsors, exhibitors, we're going to have a, a photo booth with Santa, and we invite you to bring with you gloves, hats, and scarves for children. We're also collecting non-perishable food items that we can give to families in this community. Be sure and call us at 831-7801 so that you can get your show pass. Yes, we're going to be giving passes so that we'll know how many people are going to show up and how many goodie bags to make. So you be sure and call us, the Senior Adult Program, sponsoring the, this year's Navidad on the Border celebration with seniors in this community that are so, so willing to contribute. Don't forget to call us at 831-7801. Thank you. And now we have a very special treat for you today. Tony Beatriz Fuentes is going to share one of her original writings, and we hope you enjoy it. She has been the Poetra del Barrio here in El Paso and has performed for many of our mu uh, musical shows and has read for us here on Mature Living. We hope you enjoy her writings and stay with us. Here's Beatriz, and we'll see you all next week. I was in love with this writer. And he used to tell me, come away from El Paso, Tony. Let's go make it somewhere big in New York or in another city, because we'll never do anything big in El Paso. And I love him very much, but I let him go, because I couldn't dare to leave El Paso, Texas. I love El Paso. I wrote these poems thinking that maybe I was thinking about my lost love, but no, I realized I'm talking about my love for El Paso. Let's go, Wildflower. He used to call me Wildflower because we live in desert lands, because we met amid the yucca, cactus flowers, and dunes of sand. He used to call me Wildflower because I love the wind and rain, to run or chase after dust devils and tumbleweeds that came our way. He used to call me wildflower, though he could never understand why my love was for the desert or these lonesome barren lands. Why hazy, lazy red horizons with gilded lining of the sun used to take my love and fancy like a love-stricken desert, desert star or why I love the peaceful solace of the desert in the night, or the way the stars would twinkle with silver gold or crimson light. When he went away one morning, just at the breaking of the dawn, he said, wait for me, wildflower, I'll come back to thee at dusk. Dream of me with that illusion with which you love the evening sun. Keep my love with beauty shining as a star within your heart. 
Trust and know that I'm returning, sure as you hope upon the rain. Whether not your heart a flower, I shall come to you again. Time has passed, and I keep waiting. And every time the evening sets, every time the stars are glowing, I keep hoping he'll come back. Gazing down the long horizon, my hope dies, but my love waits. Doubts and fears like tumbleweeds, my heart can surely cast away. And rain will come, but will my love ever come this way again? Children's Prayer. Yesterday, I asked a group of children to pray for all the children who have been taken from their parents, for all the children who are suffering. In a quiet way, the children listened when I asked them to send their love. In the purity of innocence, love traveled the distance to many hearts. Accompanied by hope and the resolute conviction of struggle, love healed the pain of suffering. For an instant, balance understood how to stand still, gathered strength from the energy of light, gradually melded with patience to transform destructive anger. Awareness awakened in a new realm, fully prepared to take decisive action and create a peaceful world. I stop doodling poodles when the oh-so-special and oh-so-smart Mr. Weingarten calls on me. What is the significance of the hound in the novel The Hound of the Baskervilles? Jennifer, thank you for volunteering. He grabs my notebook and holds it up to the class. The giggles and sneers make me slouch in my chair. I knew he was going to pick on me. So I have an answer memorized. I say, the hound is a huge, supposedly supernatural being that haunts the family in the novel. Almost satisfactory, he says. Then he moves on to someone else. Too bad I don't own one of Doyle's fiendish Doberman pets. I'd sick him on every person who has ever bullied me, like teachers who call on you when you're doodling. After school one day, I'd bring Fiend in on a chain. I restrained the dog which lunges at Wine Garden and shows his ominous fangs. Allow me to explain, sir. I pull the dog back as he snaps at the teacher's ankles. I doodle because you are not that interesting. Entertain me, or I will sick this fiend on you one night late when you are walking home from a restaurant. His eyes are fixed on the dog's phosphorescent jowls. Um, okay, yes, Jennifer, I will, I promise. I will make the class more interesting. Would you like to rewrite the syllabus yourself? Now you're talking. Second, I'd wander into the girls' locker room with Fiend when only Cass is there. Her hair hangs stringy and sweaty, and with smudged makeup, she's just a sad little clown, one who always points at me when I'm on the trampoline behind my back. Not anymore. Cass gets a glimpse of the beast's red glowing eyes and lets out a blood-curdling smile, and lets out a blood-curdling scream. I see you like my new pet. Cass is shaking. I can see it in her knees. Next time you decide to laugh at me when I'm on the trampoline, remember, I know what time you walk home after practice. And Fiend loves the smell of sweat. 
No, no, please don't hurt me, she says. From now on, better save your hyena laughs for something truly funny, like your expression right now. Next, I'd corner Travis on the soccer field. I mean, fiend would. Travis falls back on his butt as Fiend charges at his throat. The coward lifts his hands to cover his pretty face. Remember how you shunned me when I asked you to the winter carnival dance? Does Fiend here change your mind a little about that dance? He stares at the giant nails on the dog and sobs like a baby. Oh, yes, Jennifer, I would love to go to the dance with you. Jennifer? Jennifer? Someone's calling my name. Jennifer, it's my teacher. Join us, if you will. I pull myself out of my daydream to a room full of Snickers and Smirks. It's Mr. Oh-so-special and oh-so-smart wine garden bugging me again. I repeat, what is the symbolic significance of the Moors in Arthur Conan Doyle's novel? The Moors, um, well, the Moor is the place in England where the fiendish hound haunts the family in the novel. You gave us nearly the identical answer 30 minutes ago. Try something more original next time. At the bell, I grab my bag and run to the curb where good old mom waits in the Volvo. Good old mom rolls down the window and shouts, Jennifer, how many times have you told you do not snout, slouch, it makes you look insecure? Yes, ma'am. I want to shrivel and disappear down some deep dark hole because slouch is exactly what I did when oh so special and oh so marvelous wine garden called me out. I open the back door so Fiend can jump in. What are you doing, Jennifer? Nothing, just throwing my backpack in the back. I climb in front, cross my arms, and inhale deeply, then intentionally let out a noisy sigh. <sighs> Something good old mom really hates. Jennifer, seriously? Yes, seriously. At least it's a first step. I can hardly wait until I'm the Jennifer Weingarten, world-renowned veterinarian, model, author, and billionaires. And the best part? I won't ever have to take English class with dad again. Mm -hmm.